Apple M3 Max versus AMD. Which one is better? What I have here is the Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and Ryzen 9. But also this bad boy here. This is the newest best Threadripper CPU you can get. The 7980X with 64 cores. How does this 64 core CPU compare to this laptop when this CPU on its own costs more than this whole laptop? Let's go. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but if you do want to pick up any of the things we're talking about in this video, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, as well as the Tech Notice merch. If you want to pick up some hats, hoodies, t-shirts, you don't have to, but I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you do want to check them out. Back to the video. This CPU over here costs $5,000. And uh, what we have here is the Ryzen 7950X. 7900X and 7700X. And these are a lot more cheaper and they're more like mainstream desktop processors. But this is a high-end desktop CPU, absolutely ridiculous. And uh, it's in there. As you can see, AMD has trademarked this as 2022 AMD, but they launched this CPU just a month ago, the end of 2023. So they might have had these CPUs laying around for quite a while, interesting. So let's take a look how these CPUs perform in creative applications. First of all, Cinema 4D. If you're doing CPU rendering in there, Cinebench R24 is the best option here. And you can see the M3 Max is the baseline. And looking at the Ryzen 7, we can see that the 7700X is about 15.7% slower in the single core score and about 33.4% slower in the multi-core score. I'm not sure if you still get how impressive that is, Please keep watching. I'll explain in a minute. The Ryzen 9 is about 14% slower in the single core score and about 3% slower in the multi core score. The Ryzen 9 5, which is 7950X, but just to make the naming a little bit shorter, we call it R95, is about 14.3% slower in the single core score and about 23% faster in the multi core scores. Now, the Threadripper is about 17% slower in the single core scores, but about 236% faster in the multi-core score. That's more than three and a half times the performance of CPU than this laptop, but that's not all. Moving on to Geekbench 6, the Ryzen 7 is about 4.3% slower in the single core and about 25% slower in the multi-core scores. The 7900X is about 3% slower in the single core and about 13% slower in the multi-core scores. The 7950X is about 3% slower in the single core score and about 8.4% slower in the multi-core scores. That Ryzen has 16 P cores, where this M3 Max has only 12 P cores and 4 E cores, which is mightily impressive for this Apple. The thread rip is about 6% slower in the single core score, but about 25% faster in the multi-core score. And it's mostly due because Geekbench 6 doesn't actually count hyper-threading. All of these CPUs from AMD have hyper-threading, so they have two threads per core, which can't really be utilized in Geekbench. That's why the multi-core performance doesn't look as impressive as in Cinebench R24. Moving on to 3D rendering and Blender, we can see that the Ryzen 7 is about 28, sorry, 24 to 32% slower in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. The Ryzen 9 7900X is about 3% faster in junk shop, about 8% faster in monster, and about 14.7% faster in the classroom scenes. And here we can see why the hyper threading in those P cores, 12 P cores, really makes a difference compared to the, this laptop um, here. But regardless, are you getting what I'm saying here? Do these benchmarks make sense? The 7950X is about 35 to 51% faster here because those 16 cores really can really take this to another level in CPU rendering. And the Threadripper 7980X here is a whole another league. Junk shop scene is more than four times faster and the classroom scene again more than four times as fast. So the Threadripper is absolutely insane. 
So we have more than four times the cores on the thread repair compared to this one here, and we're getting more than four times the performance. The scaling actually kind of makes sense for the CPU. Moving on to Adobe Photoshop, we can see that the Ryzen 7700X is about 14 0.6% slower in the overall scores and up to 20% slower in the filter scores. That's quite a bit slower. The Ryzen 9 is about 10% slower in the overall scores and about 16% slower in the filter scores. The Ryzen 9 7950X is about 9% slower in the overall scores and about 16.5% slower in the filter scores. The general score is about the same. And the Threadripper, 64 core Threadripper is about 24% slower in the overall scores and about 31%, 32% slower in the filter scores. That is a huge win for this Apple M3 Max. But bear in mind, all of these CPUs here have been tested with a dedicated GPU. For all of these Ryzen's, I was using the Radeon 7900 XT GPU, which pulls 330 watts from the socket, has 20 gigabytes of VRAM, and was still not as fast as this M3 Max. The Threadripper has the best AMD GPU, as you can see that one over there, which is the 7900 XTX, which pulls even more power, so that's going to be interesting. Moving on to video editing, and in Premiere Pro, the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9s were using the 7900 XT, whereas the Threadripper has the XTX GPU. And you can see the Ryzen 7 is about 9% slower in the extended overall scores. The standard overall score is 2% faster, which is roughly about the same. You wouldn't be noticing the difference. Interestingly, IntraFrame score, which is ProRes codec, is a lot faster on the M3 Max, and I'm not surprised because ProRes is an Apple codec, so they're going to make their own devices to be ultimately optimized for that codec. But here, as you can see, having a dedicated GPU with their media engine to VRAM is a lot better there. Bear in mind, I do think we are bottlenecked by the RAM capacity here on the M3 Max because we only have 48 gigabytes of VRAM. And I can often see that being completely full when editing videos on this machine. Some of these export or Premiere Pro test what we did on the channel, uh, the live stream, we can see that there's literally 69 megabytes free, which means we're completely capping this and everything is, is gone, you know, it wants to use more. The Ryzen 9 7900X is about 1% faster in the extended overall score, which is about the same, and about 13% faster in the standard overall score. Now here, I'd really like to mention that depending which codec you're working on, long GOP, IntraFrame or RAW, then you really want to look at those scores only. But the extended overall and standard overall score is kind of piling all of these different codecs together to actually give you the performance. So depending on the codec, this Ryzen 9 can be up to 31% faster than this M3 Max. The GPU effects, as you can see, are about 26 to 16% faster. So as a standard score, about 17% faster on this M3 Max compared to a 7900XT. That's uh, mighty impressive for that little GPU. The 7950X here is about 5 to 16% faster in the extended and standard overall scores, but up to 31% faster in some of these scores, like a raw score where we need a lot of CPU power to actually decode or process the video than the Ryzen 9 obviously desktop is a lot better. Now the Threadripper is 22 to 31 or 32 percent faster in the extended and standard overall scores. Interestingly the IntraFrame again very much compares to a Threadripper. You can see 2.5 percent and 2% slower in interframe standard and extended scores. That is mighty impressive for the M3 Max. Now, both the Photoshop and Premiere Pro here have been done with the Puget Bench Creators app. And here you can see that the M3 Max for Premiere Pro isn't getting as good of a score depending which codecs you're working on. But I wanted to test and exporting this. So I have one of the projects that we're working here on the channel where there's lots of different codecs, lots of different resolution, H.264, 5, B, raw. So you've got lots of different mix of codecs, different effects, different crafts, lots of different things going on on the timeline. 
and this is about 20 minute video and then I wanted to export this video and then see how fast do all of these different systems export a whole project. The timeline is a 4K timeline but some of these clips are 6K clips and then some of these are 4K clips and we're exporting this to 4K UHD H.264 about 40 megabits per second YouTube setting export for Premiere Pro. Just a quick intervention over here if you're looking for the best storage for your Mac device whether it's laptops, Mac Studio, Mac Mini then I highly recommend you go check out my storage guide for the Mac devices. I'll leave it linked in the description below but there I'll explain how you can get something like this and an SSD like this Samsung 990 Pro for example or some of the more affordable ones. So if you're looking to save money, have faster, more flexible and more warranty on your storage then check it out in the video description below. The video is right down there. The M3 Max did it in 12 minutes and 50 seconds now, moving on to the Ryzen 7 with the Radeon 7900 XT that has 64 gigabytes of RAM. I'll leave the whole test bench in the de description below if you want to check out which exact parts I'm using there. It's completing it in 15 minutes and 16 seconds. That is about two and a half minutes slower or 19% slower, which is insane. Moving on to the Ryzen 9 7900 XT and the 7900 X. CPU combo that exported it slightly faster. Now the 12 cores really help with the export here and we're exporting this and 30 minutes and 48 seconds, which is still a minute slower than the M3 Max. That's mighty impressive still for the M3 Max. The 7950X now exported it in 13 minutes and 36 seconds, which is still slower than the M3 Max. 16p cores and a massive dedicated GPU with dedicated 64 gigabytes of RAM is still about 6% slower than the M3 Max. Now, the Threadripper though here is on another level. The Threadripper completes it in 12 minutes and 33 seconds, which is 27 seconds slower or about 3.5% slower on the M3 Max. I'm not sure if you're getting this yet, but the M3 Max is absolutely insane. Even though it is slightly slower in some of these bits, it really trades blows with some of these desktop CPUs and desktop things that are so much bigger and pull so much more power. Well, let's talk about that. How much more power do these CPUs pull compared to this M3 Max? The power consumption for this M3 Max is roughly about 60 to 70 watts in the whole package power draw. That is DRAM, GPU and CPU, the whole thing. And if you haven't got it yet, it runs it on battery. The Ryzen 7 is pulling 145 watts, which is more than twice the power draw. The Ryzen 9 is 200 watts, which is more than three times the power draw. The Ryzen 9 7950X is pulling 230 watts, which is close to four times the power draw. And the Threadripper is pulling about 350 watts, just the CPU on its own, which is almost six times the power draw what we get on this M3 Max. The most shocking thing is that this is the whole package draw for the M3 Max. If we calculate in the GPU power and the whole system draw for these desktop chips, we're pulling more than 10 times the power, especially the Threadripper that gets close to a kilowatt of power when fully utilizing the GPU and the CPU and the rest of the system. Knowing that, we can get very close performance to these Ryzen 9s with dedicated GPU on a battery. That is absolutely insane. So if you calculate just the CPU performance difference in the Cinebench R24, you can see the Ryzen 7 is getting about 7.8 points per watt, whereas the M3 Max is 28.3 points per watt, and the Ryzen 9 is 8.2, 7950X is 9.1, Threadripper 16.3, you can see even the Threadripper that has loads of cores and has very good, you know, efficiency in terms of points per watt is still close to twice the power draw for the same points or half the points for the same amount of watts, which is absolutely ridiculous for this M3 Max. So you might be saying, so what are you saying? Should we all just get a Mac then? Well, 
If you are looking for the best ultimate productivity and video editing and photo editing machine on the go, then there isn't anything better than this M3 Max. And bear in mind, if you upgrade the RAM to even more, there is slightly more performance on the table depending on your workflow. So this can have even bigger win or even further, you know, lead over these desktop chips. I know this is a ridiculous comparison and it shouldn't be really compared because one is on battery power and one is really just plugged in all the time into the socket and is pulling ridiculous amount of power. But that really is a testament how fast and good this M3 Max chip is and Apple should not be actually underestimated because what they're doing is seriously impressive. Are these desktop CPUs from AMD absolutely rubbish? Then definitely not. Because depending on your workflow, these might be a much better option for you. And you can build the whole system for half the price compared to this M3 Max there. So the desktop options here are more affordable and depending on your workflow actually faster for example cpu rendering in blender is faster as well now if you want to know how good is the m3 max on intel or the gpus compared to this one then i've got videos about this on the channel as well so feel free to see that but conclusion is oh wow is this apple absolutely amazing and if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck create a pc to save money and not spend as much on this if you don't need the portability aspect then there's build guides in the description below go check them out thanks guys for watching whatever you do don't subscribe bye bye